we'll be looking at special inclusions in gross income. Okay, paragraphs A to N of the gross income definition includes all the items listed in there into gross income. It doesn't necessarily have to comply with the requirements of the gross income definition. For example, if an item is capital in nature and it is under paragraphs A to N, it will be included in gross income regardless. So the income tax framework you've seen before, it's gross income, which is made up of the general definition of gross income. And then below it, we have the special inclusions, which we will have a look at now. Annuities, right, the requirements, there must be a fixed payment. It must be repetitive and it must be chargeable against some person, so there must be an obligation. It can, for instance, be against a pension fund to pay a pensioner a monthly pension income. So that will be an annuity. And in the Hogan case, capital was paid in the form of annuity, and that was held by the courts to be revenue in nature. It was an accident and the person got compensation. So that is usually it's capital in nature, but because it was paid in the, a form of an annuity, it was included in gross income. But payments that are determined in respect of a capital debt and it's paid in installments, that won't be an annuity. So if there's a contract that says, I sell my business to you for so much, and in the agreement says, you must pay me that amount in five installments, that won't be an annuity, just the requirements of the contract and it's a determined capital debt that's repaid. Okay, alimony allowances or maintenance, and it's received by way of a judicial order or a written agreement, for example, a divorce order for maintenance for the spouse or, and or yeah, the <clears throat> maintenance of children will be included in gross income, but it's later on as exempted again. Okay, in respect of services rendered, so any amounts that are received in respect of services rendered or the employment or holding of an office will be included in gross income. And there was a Stevens case where the employees were awarded voluntary payments for in respect of a share incentive scheme that did not materialize, so they were compensated, the employees. So the courts held that those receipts by the employees is because of their employment and it's included in gross income. And the payment to a person for services rendered by another person will be included in the gross income of the person rendering the service, or even though he doesn't get the money. Restraint of trade payments, they are normally capital in nature. It's been abused in the past where people's employment came to an end and then these restraint of trade payments were structured and at that stage those amounts that were paid were not include, included in gross income. So now the Income Tax Act has specifically included those amounts in gross income and also relates to current, previous, or any future employment. Termination of employment, these are amounts 
that are received due to the loss of employment, for example, a retrenchment, then the employer buys the employee a certain amount as agreed upon, and if the requirements are met, these amounts can be taxed as a lump sum, which, which you will also deal with later on. Retirement fund lump sum or withdrawal benefits. Retirement lump sum fund benefits will be when an employee retires or dies or is retrenched. And withdrawal benefits is when an employee resigns before any of the above retirement death or retrenchment happens. So the employee withdraws from that fund. And both the above benefits are taxed according to their own tables. Commutation of amounts due. So it's also under a contract of employment or service, and it's similar to the lump or the amount received in paragraph D, which we discussed above. Lease premiums. Okay, a premium or con similar consideration for the right to lease, usually a valuable asset. So that can be a property or warehouse close to an airport that is valuable or close to a harbor for importing and exporting with goods can be stored. And in the contract, a premium is set down. And that is in addition to the rental considerations that must be paid on a monthly basis. So that's a once off payment and that payment will be included into in the lessor's gross income. Now our payments, those are payments that are received for imparting scientific, technical, industrial or commercial knowledge. It could be of a capital nature, but it will still be included in gross income. Leasehold improvements. If a lease agreement makes provision for the Im improvements by a lessee, so it says the lessee rents this property, but the lessee must build an extra administration office onto that property, that will be a leasehold improvement, and that amount stipulated in the contract will be included in the lessor's gross income. Fringe benefits, that's the cash equivalent of the value of the fringe benefit will be included in the employee's gross income. The employer provides, for instance, services to the employee or the employee may use an asset of the employer so it's not a cash payment, but there are certain rules and regulations of determining the cash equivalent that will then be included in gross income. And disposal of certain assets, the taxpayer may manufacture assets, for instance, uh, motor vehicles that are then also resold again. So it's really stock, but the Taxpayer may use one of those motor vehicles as a demonstration model, then it's a capital asset because it's not directly sold again. But later on, if they decide to sell that demonstration model, then it will be included in gross income when it's sold. Dividends, local and foreign dividends are included in gross income. There are several exemptions available for local and foreign dividends, which you will also learn about at a later stage. Any other amounts? OK, 
that grants and subsidies that farmers receive to perform soil erosion works will be included in gross income, insurance policies on the life of employees will be included in gross income, but there are certain exemptions that also apply if, it, if amounts have already been included in the employee's income, which will be dealt with later. And then any other income that's covered by any provisions in the Income Tax Act must be included in gross income. Thank you.